Ja, wir sind weg. Der Hund ist schon ein bisschen nervös. Ja. Und der Katze hat mehr. Okay, I see him. Uh, I think we're good. CG should be at 55 millimeters. The battery is properly fixed now with tape inside, so it can't affect the CG like in the last attempt. Okay, let's see if I can land this bird. I'm scared. But it should be just fine. Oh boy, this was a really good landing. Sorry that you couldn't see it. It really feels kind of underpowered with this 9x47. So for the next flight I'm planning to change this to a uh, bigger. And I can feel the motor is really, really hot. Second attempt with a 9x75 prop. Hope this works better. Definitely a lot better. I need some serious trim for the next flight. And I'm afraid to let go the fix. Wow. Not too sure though about this high speed turn. It was apparently unplanned. I mean the high speed was planned but not the turn. <laughs> what a sketchy landing this is. So you see, you need a lot of place to land this bugger. Not too sure about wild flying somewhere, but it's a nice, nice little plane. I mean, it's not so little. It's about 1.5 kilo. I like how it works now. Touching the motor again. Ah, it's really damn hot. 9575. With 1450, seems like a good choice. I have the easy UHF here for longer range. Down there is the Arcbird OSD. Turnigy Plush 60 amp speed controller. Turnigy Aerostar 1540 kV. We have a 5200 milliamp 4 cell. My immersion video transmitter here hooked up. And I'm using the Foxy Legend 3 TV out. This is just a tiny locator thingy to find it over there in the fields if something happens. About the video setup, I wanted to show you the details because I like how this worked out. First of all, I use, I use server extension wires to get the video system in the front. The immersion takes the 12 volt power here. It comes from the Arcbird, which is supplying 12 volts on the video out. Transmitter is video out, of course. The red wire, the 12 volt, to the battery in. You don't need the ground here, that's nice, because you have the ground here on the video signal cable as well. Yellow or orange being the video feed, ground, and I have 5 volt red here. It's ground and video to go to the same cable that feeds the cam here. It goes to the Arcbird. And the 5 volts cable uh, supplies power for the Foxia Legend. It runs on 5 volts. So this is the video in cable, the cam, supplying only video and ground to this long cable here, which goes to video 
in on the arc bird. This video transmitter powers the 5 volt Fox here. And I get everything off the 12 volts of the system. This at the moment is the TV out of the Fox here in 16 by 9 of course, which isn't too bad here because it makes lovely black bars so you can read the OSD of the Arcbird better. One final line of sight test to see if the video downlink was fine, so I can check it on the DVR footage later. And one thing I noted though is that using the electronic stabilizer makes a really shaky perspective and is really ugly to fly FPV with. DVR footage looks fine though, so turn off the stabilizer and all systems go. And on the bottom you see a simplified version of the OSD. From left to right you see the voltage of the main battery, the ground speed, the amps the motor draws at the moment, the GPS mode I'm in and the milliamp hours used so far. GPS mode, once it has this star symbol next to it, it's in course and altitude hold mode and GPS stabilized. With 5 amps you can maintain your altitude and fly around 50 kilometers of cruise speed, which makes it a very efficient airframe. Considering I have a 5.2 amp hours battery, I can almost fly an hour. Now you see this home symbol, that means I'm in return home mode, which works fine by the way. And if the symbol shows you a remote, then you're in manual mode without any stabilization. What a lovely feeling, come back after such a flight, 
with a perfect spot landing, almost spot. Um, had to land, not because of the battery was empty, but rather because it starts to rain. That's also the reason maybe my video was not too clear, because the air is really humid. Thanks for watching this longer video. You've seen the build, my concerns, my errors, <laughs> the errors over there. So make sure to tape in this battery really well. Make sure the CG is at 55 millimeters. Also make sure to have enough airspeed and the air vents uh, to cool the motor are a really good idea. Let me check. Yeah, with those little things here. Just some clear plastic and tape and cut. It gets enough air. Really nice. I mean, it's not as hot as on my first test flights, but the motor is cool now after 10 minutes or so flight. Thanks for watching. Bye.